Today we're exploring Lincoln, a city in the East Midlands of England known for its history, charm, and its stunning cathedral. We'll be spending two days here, fully immersing ourselves in the culture, history, and some delightful food and beautiful architecture that this unique city has to offer. And of course, we're starting our day right here at the Lincoln Cathedral. This magnificent medieval masterpiece is probably the most iconic landmark in the city. And you can see it from all around, but up close and personal, it's a really stunning cathedral. It's, it's definitely one of my favorites. It's definitely going in the top five list for me. <laughs> and we haven't even been inside yet. It feels very appropriate that this statue in the churchyard has a dog with it, considering the cathedral's pet friendly. That's right, our neurotic baby gets to go inside. It's your first cathedral, are you excited? She can't contain it. We have now been to a number of these cathedrals, and at least from the outside, this seems like it has the most interesting layout. Like we have found two doors that are very pretty and intricate, but not the doors in. Well, we still haven't found the entrance, but we did uh, spend about 15 minutes talking with a local who uh, gave us some suggestions for other things to do in the area. So I'm excited, but let, let's go inside the cathedral. <laughs> It really is a massive cathedral. I think I read online that by area, it's the fourth largest in the UK. And I also read that for over 200 years, it held the title of being the tallest building in the world up until I think about 1548 when the central spiral collapsed. I also read that that claim was disputed about it being the tallest, so I don't know. Either way, it's a giant cathedral and I'm so excited that we finally found the entrance. <laughs> It's interesting because walking in, it doesn't seem huge on the inside, but I think that's because it's got kind of a non-traditional layout. There are these interesting wood carvings. I haven't seen anything like this in other cathedrals. Admission to get in is 11 pounds, so uh, it is one of the few places that we've had to pay to enter a cathedral here. But, uh, they do offer a whole bunch of guided tours, including one that I thought sounded really interesting that is about the different graffiti and markings in the building. I don't think we're gonna take any of the tours today, um, but they, they seem like they have some cool ones, including ones that also go up to the tower. I've been a tower champion once, I think I'm good. One thing that you have to find if you come here is the Lincoln Imp. There are some variations to the story, but basically the story of the Lincoln Imp is that in the medieval times, the devil sent two imps here to the Lincoln Cathedral, basically to wreak havoc on the cathedral. And in order to stop their chaos, an angel turned one of the imps into stone and it can still be seen today on this pillar. It has become kind of an icon of Lincoln and you definitely have to find it when you come here. You can also pay 20p to light up the imp, which would probably help you find it because uh, we, we took a minute, Jeremy spotted it, but uh, it, it's, it's neat to see. these upper balconies up here that look really tall. I wonder if you can access those because I bet they have a cool view of the cathedral. Fun fact, well maybe for you, I haven't seen the movie, but apparently this was used as a filming location in the Da Vinci Code. That's probably a fun fact for someone else because I haven't seen it either. How, how have neither of us seen that movie? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, apparently they used the interior of this cathedral to uh, be Westminster Abbey in the Da Vinci Code. So Tom Hanks and stuff have, have been to Lincoln. It's pretty cool. There's some beautiful stained glass in here, but these windows are some of the most vibrant. These are beautiful. I don't think the camera is doing them justice. They're so blue. Lincoln Cathedral also has one of the four remaining copies of the Magna Carta. It is currently available to see at Lincoln Castle. Uh, however, they have certain days that are dog friendly, so we'll do that tomorrow when we can bring our dog.
There are traces of Lincoln's Roman history all throughout the city, but I think one of the most impressive things that I'm excited to see today is the Newport Arch. This arch holds great historical significance because not only was it the entrance or one of the entrances to the city in uh, Roman times, but it was actually originally constructed in the third century AD and it is considered to be the oldest arch in England. So pretty fantastic, right? We're walking where Romans have walked. It's amazing. Just on the other side of the arch is coffee at the arch. When there's a place called Coffee by the Arch, you might as well have some Coffee by the Arch. Well, except that the inside was empty and the outside with the view of the arch packed. But that's okay, we got some grab and go breakfast. Jeremy got himself a pizza roll, got myself a latte and a croissant. We're ready to stroll the city. Walking around Lincoln is just lovely, um, or at least mostly. When your city has such a steep hill that you have a street called Steep Hill, well, that trek up to the castle is not so fun. But other than the very steep hill, it's just such an adorable area. In fact, I read on the Visit Lincoln website that this is actually the fourth steepest street in all of England. But just look at how cute it is. The little cute, narrow, cobbled lane. A little bit of Lincolnshire in that store. I did that. You did. It was established before that song, so. There are just so many cute little tea rooms and pubs and little unique local yeah, shops it. to enjoy on your way back down down the hill, that's when you enjoy them. You don't enjoy them going up. <laughs> Thanks, Lincoln, so do you. I wanna go to this place just because of the sign, but as it turns out, it's a cat cafe, and now I wanna go even more. It's apparently appointment only, and we have our dog with us. But if we're ever back in Lincoln by ourselves, we're coming here. The sign on the door also says that it is Lincoln's oldest cat cafe, which implies that there's more than one. We made our way down the steep hill and now we are on High Street, so we gotta check that out. Feels appropriate that the TGI Fridays is on Corporation Street. <laughs> that makes sense. That's the Glinky Glory Hole. That's the glory hole I've yeah. been hearing so much about. <laughs> it is, it is. All right. <laughs> I guess this canal here also dates back to Roman times and is considered one of the oldest canals in England, which I'm sure we'll learn more about in a little bit. Brayford Waterfront, or Brayford Pool, is considered England's oldest inland harbor. There are lovely views of the area from here, plus there are a lot of options for food and fun. They've got everything. We're hopping on the Brayford Bell, where we're gonna take a 50-minute guided boat tour of Lincoln and the countryside here. My favorite thing is that on their website, they emphasize that they have heated indoor seating. That's how you know you're on a boat tour in England, but we will not need that indoor seating today. It is so perfect for a boat ride. Our journey starts today at the Brayford Pool, which is the whole reason for the existence of Lincoln. Seeing, learning about the narrow boats and kind of the lifestyle and how this has increased. Uh, apparently there's like 20,000 people in the UK living on these now because of the affordability and different lifestyle. I feel like at some point we have to try it. I mean, we could stay on one, I guess. <laughs> oh look, that one's for sale. It's our boat. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> People who love nature, especially bird watching, because it's quite famous for its kingfishers here. So if you keep an eye, some days it's quiet, some days it's quite active, just keep an eye, just see what you can find. Well, that was a nice leisurely boat tour. I have to say that the most similar thing that we've done was probably the boat tour we did in Chester, and I thought there was a little bit more to see on 
the tour in Chester. However, I feel like we learned so much about narrow boats and people that live on boats and the lady actually corrected the audio recording and said that there are actually 40,000 to 50,000 people currently living on narrow boats. And uh, now I want to try it. Jeremy and I floated the idea of getting a caravan and just touring the country in a caravan, but that to me has been a little bit nerve wracking because I'm not super confident driving a car but a narrow boat, we could navigate a canal in a narrow boat, right? <laughs> I don't know, if you know about narrow boats and that lifestyle, and you have some tips or information, please let us know. Would you tour the country in a narrow boat? An, uh, uh, a canal holiday, as she called it? Tour the country, uh, I thought we more just meant like, let's spend a few days on one. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> have you ever uh, done a, a canal holiday, as she called it? Uh, or do you have any tips or suggestions for us about narrowboat life or maneuvering canals? Because I'd be curious to know what they are. We've uh, seen the Lincoln countryside. That's where we've been. We have come to Cornhill Quarter, which is probably the area that we have uh, seen the most of while we've been here in Lincoln because we've been taking the city bus and the bus station is right by Cornhill Quarter. And this area has been totally redone in the last few years. I know that because I looked up the bus station on Google Maps and it wasn't there. <laughs> and that was only a few years ago. This, this place looks very different. Um, and there's some pretty cool looking places. And we're gonna go to one that we already know we like. It's called the Cozy Club. <laughs> used to be the corn exchange. So it is a market, or was a market, dating back to, I think, the 1870s that they have recently restored. And they have very nicely kept, or, or I guess redone some of the adverts in here as the old adverts that they would have had in the days of the market. Plus there's just like a cool, cool art, like just good vibes in general. And they have great food. I got the Cozy Club, which uh, is a chicken club with some pretty good looking bacon on it too. Yep, that is a solid sandwich. How is your bur burger? Is it chicken or is it a burger? Chicken burger. Oh, how is it? It was really good. The mac and cheese patty or fritter or whatever it was, it looked like it had green onions or something in it that was not, or pesto-y, I don't know, there was green in it, but yeah, the whole thing all together, very tasty. We always try to support local businesses, but the Cozy Club is definitely a chain that I can get behind. Also, Cornhill Quarter is lovely. It's the next day. We're starting our day here at Lincoln Castle. You know, we came here because we knew that there would be an amazing view of the Lincoln Cathedral. But what I didn't realize is how magnificent these grounds themselves would be. It's just so lovely here. We just got done with a tour uh, that is free with your admission. So I highly recommend that. We learned so much about the history, so much interesting information. And now we're gonna explore some of the places that we didn't on the tour. A couple of interesting things that we learned on the tour is that the oldest mott here is uh, this one right here called Lucy's Mott, I believe. And it's named after Lucy, who was the granddaughter of Lady Godiva. One of the things that I found fascinating is that this has a well in it, or it had a well in it. They drilled down 80 feet to reach the water table to get to the spring so that they had fresh water. And uh, I think our tour guide, Helen, called it a formidable piece of medieval construction and I, I would agree that that tidbit of information blew me away. Both our tour guides were really great. Mel, the gentleman that was doing it, was telling us about the portcullis here, which there's a false one here that's made out of metal, but the original one would have been made out of wood and was two tons, so it would have been pretty difficult for someone to lift it and move it, unlike that one. Is also saying that they would basically lower this get a bunch of people trapped here who were trying to storm the castle, and then they would dump boiling water on them and then hot, hot sand so that basically 
um, once they had boiling water on them and their skin was scalding, they would try to wipe the sand that stuck to their skin and it would basically like take their skin off, which is just probably the most horrifying story I've heard on a tour ever. It's pretty grotesque. But it's, it's really fascinating. Um, yeah, medieval times, probably didn't want to be around in them. No. <laughs> This is actually kind of scary to me. <laughs> it's not my favorite so far. I mean, the, the nice thing is, is that the railings are all enclosed. The fact that this railing isn't a solid material that you can see through it makes it a little more terrifying. But it's dog friendly and she seems to be fine with it. I don't love this staircase. <laughs> don't like that. <laughs> Decided we were not gonna be that risky. We don't wanna do that. I mean, honestly, how much better of a view are we gonna get than here anyway? I guess they still have court in this courthouse today. Pretty fascinating. Now come inside the Lucy, I think it was the Lucy Tower. It houses gravestones, which are, I guess, feet stones, not headstones. They're, they're the foot of the grave, which I thought was also interesting tidbit from our tour. Lincoln Castle has stood here for over 900 years. And some of the incredible things that you can do here is explore the Victorian prison, you can walk the city walls, which have fantastic views, and you can see one of the four remaining copies of the Magna Carta. I think we've covered pretty much everything here, except we have not seen the Magna Carta, which I think we're trying to figure out where it's located. Maybe this building? Let's find out. Oh, I guess the other thing we haven't done is the Victorian prison yet. We haven't seen the inside of it. In this building right here, is the Magna Carta vault. It has both the Magna Carta and the Charter of the Forest, which is the, the document that uh, predates it by a couple years. It's interesting because as an American, like we don't, I don't really remember ever learning about the Magna Carta in school or anything. It wasn't really until coming here that we learned about the historical significance of it and about how in the 1200s it shaped basically constitutional law here in the UK. And as Americans, it is historic to us too because it's also the basis of the US Constitution and a lot of the state laws that we have as well. To see one of the four remaining copies is pretty incredible. Um, you can't film or uh, take any photography in there, but wow, like what a neat experience. Uh, I think there's also one in Salisbury. So like if you have an opportunity to see one of them, you should do it. You know, I was expecting that we would see a Victorian prison, which is interesting to look at. But what I didn't realize is that they would have all of these um, artifacts and things from all the excavations they've done dating back to Roman times. So that's pretty interesting to see all these random things. <laughs> After traveling with our friends that brought along their nine-year-old daughter, we have noticed a lot more when things have interactive elements. And this place has a lot of them, so if you have a younger kid, they might enjoy that. Ended our day here with a, a little bit of an unsettling chapel. They have a prisoner's chapel where each prisoner has just like this little cubby hole that they stand in. And it's kind of creepy and weird, especially standing looking into all of them. <laughs> has been, I don't know, 16 pounds well spent. Yeah, really interesting. You could spend like a full day here, basically. You really could. I mean, there's big grounds that you could have a picnic or something too. It's really nice in here. We have certainly spent a lot more time than I think we intended. I'm hungry. It's time to get something to eat. I think we know the perfect place to go. Now we're gonna visit Brown's Pie Shop, which is a place that our friend Alex, that is a local from here, told us about and we have been told by a number of people in the town as we've been walking around that we need to come here. This place has been serving their famous pies here since 1987. Although I was looking at their website and they have a lot of the history pre-pie shop, including how in 1925, the building was actually occupied by Lawrence of Arabia. Just fascinating, interesting history about this location. But they have a very interesting looking menu and I'm excited to try some pies. I'm patiently waiting for her pie. I got one of the special pies today, which is a pulled pork pie and I got went for the chips that look fantastic. I got a cheese pot pie that had very interesting cheeses. Yeah, those chips look incredible. 
that's really nice. It's got like a really kind of like a smoky sort of barbecue-y, but not barbecue flavor. Yeah, that's really tasty. And the, the crust is really flaky. It's very good. I don't know how to attack this. It's like so large and overflowing with pastry. Oh, and it has a nice cheese crust on top. That is really good. It has several cheeses in it, but the ones that stand out, it has that like gooeyness of the brie with that like little bit of funk from the Stilton. It's really good. I think Jeremy, you're really gonna like this one. And it's got broccoli in it too. We have had a lot of very tasty pies throughout the UK. That cheese pie I had today, probably the very best one of them. And the chips were probably some of the best chips I've had here as well. Just phenomenal, excellent, excellent pies. When the person who would prefer a meat pie can agree that my vegetarian pie was the best pie. Fair. Mine was still really good, but yours was even better. Makes you a little sad you couldn't order a steak and stilton that they were out. Yeah, that's what I really wanted, but my pulled pork one was still really good. I took a little stroll here through this market hoping to find some plum bread because we've heard that that's a Lincolnshire thing we should try. But it seems to be mostly people making handmade goods and vintage items, things like that. It's a cute little market. I guess it's the first Saturday of every month. I've seen a lady playing a harp in Winchester. I've seen a discotheque cat band in Glasgow. And now right here in Lincoln, I've seen the experimental sound machine. I can't think of a better way to end our day here. Thank you so much for coming along with us. If you did not have Lincoln on your radar, you should, because this is a really uh, neat city, great cathedral, great castle, and just, we've had a great time here. So thank you for watching. Uh, thank you to our patrons for supporting our channel. Make sure you subscribe because we have plenty more here in this area to check out. If you have not seen our videos from Canterbury or Winchester, those are both also magnificent cathedrals. Make sure you check out those videos. We will see you in the next one.